Today I'm going to show you how to paint Necron Ophidian Destroyers quick and easy but looking very cool. And it's coming right up. Necrons! Nick speaking and welcome to this video. Right, let's paint the Ophidian Destroyers. Now these models here I have converted and I've got a tutorial on how to convert them linked up in the description below for you to see. Now as you can see I've got the models in two sections, a top half and bottom half and I've done that just because it's going to be easier to paint. I'm going to glue them together at the end. And the first job was to prime them black with a black primer. Now I find that I still get some misses from the black primer so my first job was to go in with some black paint and just touch up any of the misses that the spray paint didn't actually do. And there's a good reason for this because the way we're going to paint them, we do want to make sure that all of the recesses are black because that's going to be our natural shadows when we paint them. And the first colour is going to be Iron Breaker. I'm going to dry brush this all over the miniature. So I'm going to put some paint on the brush, just take it off on the piece of cloth and then I'm going to take it up a little bit more on the tissue and then just gently dry brush the miniature. We're looking for a mottled, worn metal look and the idea is the recesses will stay black when we do the dry brushing. Now when it comes to the top half of the miniature, I'm not going to dry brush everything because there's two sections on the blades that I'm going to want to keep black and that's going to give me a bit of contrast on the weapon. So I'll just try not to get it on the little bars going across the top of the weapon but everything else will be painted this colour. So just finish that all over. Okay, so next up it is Lead Boucher and I'm going to do some more dry brushing. However, I'm only going to use this colour on the bottom half of the miniature, not the top half. I'm going to use a different colour. It's just how I paint my Necrons with the infantry sort of areas with a different colour to the sort of vehicles and any of the more robotic parts as such, like canoptic spiders. It just gives me a little difference of silver on the miniatures so that it's not just one bland silver. So just dry brush this all over the bottom half of the miniature. I'm also dry brushing little metal areas on the base, the basing material that these models are attached to. And of course I am dry brushing the plasma site at the same time. So we're starting to look pretty good here. However, what I've noticed Unlike any of the other Necron miniatures that I've painted previously, these models have quite big recessed areas on the towel section. So what I did is I got some black wash and put it on my wet palette and then I watered that black wash down. I want it to be quite thin. And then I just painted in the recesses of that towel section with this black wash. Just because, like I said, the uh, dry brushing had gone on to that black but rather than blocking it in with black which would just look a little weird I've gone in with this thin black wash and it just helps bring out the difference between the recesses and the top sections. Okay so back to the top half of the miniature and we're going to dry brush this with Rune Fang still but again not dry brushing the areas that we want black as much as possible they will get a bit messy but that's okay we'll tidy that up. So just dry brush this colour all over the top sections. Now when it comes to the claws, how I paint my claws, for example, like on the wraiths, is I made the tips of the claws uh, more silver. It's the same colour, I just went in with a, a thicker dry brush. So I just worked on the front of those claws until I had a nice sort of complete colour rather than the mottled sort of worn look. And that just gives me some really cool, sharp claws. Okay, so the silver is nearly done, but not quite. We're going to get the lead belcher once again. We're going to, what I call, oil up the top sections of these miniatures. So I'm going to do what's called an overbrush, which is like a dry brush, but the paint is wetter on the brush. And I'm just going to paint the bigger areas of the miniature. So that will be the top carapace, a little bit on the head, on the arms. I'm just going to effectively make some of the miniature not look worn because the whole of the metal wouldn't be worn all over. There'd be some areas more worn than others. And this helps give that effect and it just makes the metal look a little oily. It's a pretty cool effect and it's worth this final step. 
And talking of final steps, I'm now going to go to the bottom half of the miniature. I'm going to get the rune fang still. I'm just going to gently dry brush areas where I think the light would be hitting that body. Again, it's just a point of difference for the metal so that it just doesn't look all one metal color. So just do this in all of the areas you think the light would be hitting. Okay, so once that's done, we are going to use warp stone green and we're going to paint the orbs. So we're going to paint the orbs on the arms, we're going to paint the necron symbol on the chest plate, and we're going to paint all of the orbs on the bottom half of the body. There's quite a few, of course, on this miniature. We're going to use a watered down paint. We're going to do at least two thin coats. Maybe some of the bigger areas, you may need three thin coats, but just work on the green and get everything that you want green painted. So that's all of the orbs first coats done and I've also painted the little wire on the weapon as well because I thought that would give a nice point of difference and of course I'm painting the plasma site as well, the orbs all over the plasma site. So next up we are going to use mute green to highlight all of that green that we've just painted. I'm also going to paint this colour for the eyes as well. So again, I've got some watered down paint on my wet palette. I'm just going to go over with two or three coats of this color. Now what we're looking to do is leave the original color on the outside area of the orbs, just to give us a nice sort of orb effect. It's a basic way to do the orbs. However, it looks cool in the end, but I will be doing something different for the little wires on the weapons because I feel they would benefit from a little bit of blending. So we're going to do some blending in a minute. But first of all, let's get these highlights done all over. And don't forget, of course, to do the eyes. OK, so for the wires, the first step is going to be to block in an area in the middle with this colour. Because, of course, it takes two or three coats just to build up this colour. And this will be our starting point for when we do some blending. So just block this in and don't forget to turn the model around so that you do all sides of the wire with this color. Don't paint all of the wire, just the middle section. Okay, with that all dried, we are going to blend these two colors together. I've got both colors on my wet palette and they're both watered down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the Warpstone Glow color on the outside uh, section first, just paint that on. Then I'm going to get to the Mute Green and I'm going to paint that on the middle section up until we get to the warp stone green. Then I'm going to take the paint off of my brush and I'm just going to manoeuvre the two paints together backwards and forwards just to get a little blend. This is a form of wet blending but it's a nice simple way to do it. Now you will need to do this several times, probably around three or four times on each section. And again, don't forget to do the side the back, the top and the bottom. And there they are all finished looking pretty cool. Now of course you could introduce a third colour when you're doing this blending if you really want them to pop but two colours is enough for me. It helps them pop and they look pretty cool. Right next up is Gahanna's Gold. Now with this paint you're going to have to really shake it and also I'd recommend mixing it with a stirring stick because if you don't do that the gold colour will be really red. Once you've got the gold colour on your wet palette, then it's time to paint. And we're going to paint the collars of these miniatures. This will add an extra colour without being over the top, and it will just give them a little bit more detail. So I'm going to do two thin coats, just paint the collar of these miniatures. Okay, so once that was done, it was time to go back to the weapons. And now I'm going to black in the little bars on the top of the weapons. As I said, with the dry brushing, it can be a bit messy. So we're just going to tidy them up with the black paint. And the reason why I've got so much black paint on the wet palettes there is because I'm actually painting 18 miniatures all together. I'm painting six Ophidians here and 12 Scorpec Destroyers along with six Plasma Sites. So that's why there's so much paint on the wet palette. Okay, so that's the black done. Now we're going to highlight the black. We're going to use Lead Belcher and we're going to do a very gentle dry brush over the top of the black. If you go too hard, you'll end up just changing the black color to a silver color. We don't want that. We want it to stay black. So this is a real gentle dry brush just over the black areas. 
Okay, so with that done, I'm going to work on the base and I'm going to use Caliban Green. I'm going to paint all of the rocks. I'm going to paint any crystals. I'm going to paint any buildings that are on the bases that I want to be green. It's going to be a different green color to the green we've already painted. That's why we're starting with Caliban Green. So just paint this all over those areas and I would recommend two thin coats. Once that was dried, then go in with Warpstone Green and do a dry brush over the top of that color. Nice and simple, just a little dry brush. And once that's dried, we're going to go over all of those areas again with Mute Green. We're going to do a gentle dry brush with Mute Green. Now what I did for the metal areas on the base to make them different from the actual model itself is I went in with a brown Earthshade wash and just washed over the metal sections on the base. And then I did a little dry brush of Ironbreaker over the top of that. And it just makes the metal areas just look different from the actual model. Okay, so next we're going to work on the weapons. Now I know the traditional way to do these weapons is green. I didn't want traditional. I wanted them to be easy to paint. I wanted them to look cool and I wanted them to match the rest of my army. This is a new weapon for my army so I was happy to paint it in a different way and I wanted to try out one of the new technical paints that had come out. So what I did is I got some white paint and I painted in the little grooves of the weapon. I used a triple zero brush and I just painted in the recesses of the little pattern that's on the weapon. If you make a mess of this, you can just wipe off the white paint with your finger. But try to be as careful as you can and just paint all of the grooves all over the weapons. Now I also painted the Canoptic Plasmacite's face white. I did several thin coats just to build up the white colour. It's how I paint my Canoptic creatures, well with the exception of Scarabs because their faces are so small. So I did that and it's looking pretty cool and the Plasmacite is basically finished. So all we have to do now is finish the weapons. And we are going to use the technical paint, Tesseract Glow. What we're going to do is just paint over the white areas with this color. Now you could potentially just sort of wash over the whole of the blade. I didn't personally like this look, so that's why I didn't do it. I just gently painted over the white areas as neatly as I could to hopefully give a very cool effect. And here they are all finished. The weapons are looking pretty cool. I'm really pleased that I did the blending on the wires that really helps make the models pop. Now for the bases, I just glued some sand on them. I painted the sand black and then I dry brushed the sand with gray. And then of course I just painted the rims of the bases and gave them a varnish. Let me know what you think in the comments box below. Now if you want to see the conversion video for these guys, here is that video. And if you want to see some of my other Necron painting tutorials, well, there is a playlist just there. Uh, uh.